Okay, you know what I discovered? That shopping for a monitor isn't really fun. <laughs> there is no perfect monitor. And uh, there's this fear of making the wrong choice because we spend our entire day staring at this thing. It's kind of, when you think about it, the, it's gonna be the most used piece of tech <laughs> for a photographer or videographer. You're always staring at your screen. So it's a little scary to make the wrong choice. So as you know, I recently purchased the, uh, the Mac uh, Studio, and the obvious choice for a display is to just go with the Studio display. So uh, that, that's like the easy and the, least, the path of least resistance, and I think Apple banks on that, because there's so many other choices for monitors, but none of them are really perfect. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about like my dilemma and what I ended up going with in case you're going, you know, you're sort of, you know, monitor shopping, which again, is not exciting. So if you're new here, I am a photographer, but I also make YouTube videos. So my, uh, in my needs are the following. The first thing is it has to be 4K and 5K. I record my videos in 4K and I edit in 4K. Also 4K is really nice to watch. I did test a 2K monitor next to the 5K monitor, which is, uh, you know, this iMac. 5K of iMac here, and you could see the difference. You know, for the distance that you're, you know, working at, a 5K monitor is just amazing for looking at detail and pixel peeping and all that fun stuff. So I knew I wanted 5K, but could live with 4K. Screen size, bigger than 27, smaller than 99. Definitely had to be a flat screen. At first I mentioned in the last video that it, uh, maybe a curved screen, but you guys made a great recommendation is, you know, for, for uh, photography work and lines, it's not really smart to get a curved. So it has to be flat. It has to be calibratable, which most of them are. The connections, um, I wanted a mul multiple array of connections because if I want to upgrade the monitor that I purchased like in a few years, I could give that to like my kid or someone else and it has connections like HDMI could maybe act as like a second monitor. Uh, so I wanted multiple connections instead of just Apple's Thunderbolt only connection. A matte screen. I've only had glossy, high gloss screens and I finally for photography wanted a matte screen. Now this one's kind of shallow, but I wanted the monitor to look good. I mean, if you, you know, you have like a cool desk setup like I do, <laughs> um, some of these monitors were completely ugly, like huge bezels, very plasticky. Some of them were like high gloss finish, which is like so 2001. It's gotta be sturdy. Like <laughs> some of these monitors that I went to go see, like you just move the table and they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that would be so annoying if you're typing and the monitor's kind of moving on its stand. Uh, if you do like a monitor and it's wobbly though, you could you know, forget the stand that comes with the monitor and just get a VESA stand and like something a little bit more sturdy. So there's always that option as well. Now I wanted the monitor to be bright in case it's sunny here. So at least 400 nits, even though I don't know, I don't even know what a nit is, but I know that this guy is 500 nits. The new studio display is 600 nits. Uh, excellent HDR monitors are like a thousand nits. So, uh, you know, 400. Sounds like a good number right there. So why not go, just go with the studio display? That's the, like I said, the path of least resistance. It's beautiful, it, it's in the Apple ecosystem. So the first reason is design-wise, I felt like it kind of was, it felt a little flat. And um, it just has the same panel that I've had for so long. I wanted something that's maybe a little bit of an upgrade. And design-wise, I thought that the bezels on that could have been a lot thinner. There's a lot of monitors that are on the market that have very thin bezels that to me are just a little bit more attractive than the thicker bezel. So with the price and the adding the matte screen and that the design was a little eh, and it didn't have connections that have like, you know, uh, mini display or HDMI even in case you want to use it with a Roku or something. Uh, that kind of was like, it, I just took it off the table and left it off the table. Now, once you say no to the studio display, you realize that like there aren't really a lot of other options. So right after the studio display, there's a couple of other 5K displays, but when you look at them, you might as well go with the studio display. 
you know, LG is the next logical choice. They make something called the uh, Ultra Fine, which is 27 inches, which has kind of the same technology as what's in the Apple displays. But the build quality of that thing was just horrible. <laughs> it was like wobbly and very plasticky. But that one was on the table for sure. All right, so what did I go with? I decided to go with a BenQ because I've seen some BenQ panels and their color accuracy is great and they're designed for photographers and designers. So let's go get it. Bah, wow, that is big. All right, so I decided to go with the 32 inch BenQ. Uh, it's called the PD3220U. And the, re the main reason I went for this guy was real estate, 32 inches. It's 4K, so it's a little bit of a, a downer there. It's 4K instead of 5K, but it's Thunder Thunderbolt 3 connection. It's got a matte screen and it's got accurate colors. You can sort of, um, a what was I gonna say? I don't know, but let's open it. Okay, the BenQs come with a little hockey puck. It's kind of like a little uh, adjuster for your brightness or for whatever you decide to... Oh, man. It's heavy. Everything's falling out. I don't know if I did this right. Okay. <sighs> okay, you get cables. You get a heavy-duty... Look at this, guys. Metal. Me the other thing is it fits the studio aesthetic. You see, it's gray, which is nice. What is this, warranty information? Oh, so, uh, okay, you also get a calibration report. It tells you that they calibrated it, which is, uh, uh, here's the stand. Stand by me, stand by me. Okay, so the bottom of the stand is metal, which is nice and the top is plastic, but at least it fits the studio display aesthetic. Nice touch, no tools needed, hand tightenable. I like that, a lot. Also has little rubber feet at the bottom, which is nice so it doesn't scratch up your designer desk. <laughs> so here's the stand. I love it. All right, let's get the display out of here. We have it upside down. Okay. Uh, help me, uh, it's so heavy. Ta-da, that was easy. Mira, Benku, Benku. Look at this, look at this guys, adjustable. Adjustability for free. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Okay, after a week of using the BenQ 3220U, <laughs> uh, let me give you the positives and negatives that I found throughout the week. So, so let's start with the great stuff. The great stuff is styling. I find that the styling is better than what I would have gotten, I think, on the studio display. I didn't really love the large bezels on the studio display. So the styling, and with the styling comes the adjustability that you can, you know, it goes up, it goes down for free, not having to pay extra. I will admit though, I have a riser here. So putting the monitor up on the riser, I haven't really adjusted it. It's not like I stand up or changed the level of my, let's do that right now. Okay, next positive is the hockey puck. I actually like that they uh, include this little puck where you can control sort of your brightness. You can assign the buttons to be anything you like. That is a great addition because the user interface and the menu on some of these things like um, aren't so great. Like for example, LG doesn't have a puck. So you have to use a little button that's at the bottom of the monitor and go through like an old user interface with pixelated menus. <laughs> it's so terrible. Um, so it's nice to have the puck where you can adjust brightness because just so you know, if you hook up your Mac to this monitor, you can't control brightness from your keyboard like you maybe used to. So it's nice to have that little, you know, brightness controller. I will say though that the puck, you have to like turn it 18 times before it starts, you know, like the adjustability isn't very, 
linear, let's just say. You have to be like, grr, grr, grr. it goes one number at a time uh, to actually make a change. So you're kind of like cranking it up. It's kind of weird. So that puck, total positive. The colors, the colors, the colors. BenQ knows what it's doing as far as colors go. After calibrating my monitor and, uh, you know, sort of matching it with the iMac and checking on other devices, the colors look great, skin looks great, nature looks great. So I'm super happy editing on the monitor, no regrets whatsoever. And I will say that I'll never go back to a glossy screen uh, for photography editing. I just love the matte screen. It cuts reflections. I don't even have that many reflections in this room, but just you don't realize that you see things, you know, in the glossy one, even if there isn't light hitting it. But now it's just the photograph and it's great to edit with a matte screen. I will say beware though, if you do use your monitor to watch movies and to sort of get a little bit of an oled -y, you know, experience, the BenQ doesn't really have the blackest of the blacks. And that's more a product, I think, of it being a matte screen than the LC LED technology in this panel. Um, the, the iMac definitely looks like very punchier, um, which by the way, is, for me, wasn't great for editing photos now that I realize uh, what I was missing. You know, definitely much better for editing photos where you can kinda, it looks like the end product, which might be print on the matte screen. But if you do watch movies, you're gonna get better punchiness if you watch movies that way um, on the iMac slash studio display. Now, another positive is brightness. I thought that I would not be able to get bright enough on this. I thought I'd be a little scared. If, the, if you do have sun that is hitting the screen and very close, then I, I would try it first. Me, I have a side window that I sort of put a scrim on and it, um, it, it, the monitor during the day is bright enough. I was a little nervous about that. And when the, in my lower light editing, uh, you know, atmosphere, I actually have to lower it down to like 25%. So that made me super happy. That was my number one concern was brightness. Colors, man, colors, so great. Next positive is screen real estate. Uh, going from 27 to 32, obviously 32 is better. It's bigger. You have more workspace. I found with the extra real estate, when I'm culling photos, I like to put the full-size one on the right now and then the grid view on the left. All right, let's talk negative, shall we? Uh, the first one that you have to get used to is scaling. 4K monitor versus 5K monitor. Apparently, Macs don't work super great when they scale to 4K. I don't understand it at all, but it's probably better for you to get a 5K monitor that works well. That's a reason to get the studio display. Just plug and everything will work fine. This is the default setting for uh, the BenQ here, the default scaling at 4K. And what happens is all the print, because it's a larger monitor, all the print at 4K gets super tiny, very, very, very small. So what I have found that is what I've been doing is sort of scaling so that I can read better. I go to 3360 and it kinda, it's just one little resolution down. And um, I don't see much of a difference, but the print does get bigger by enough to be able to function. So just know that that was a little bit of uh, something to get used to. Now, as far as resolution goes and photo editing, uh, if your face is very close to the screen, you will be able to see the difference between 5K and 4K. But in normal viewing distance, which is about a foot and a half or so, uh, you're not gonna notice the difference between 5K and 4K. However, close up within a foot or so, you can definitely see that the 5K is much sharper than the 4K. So I think you really have to go and look at the difference yourself to see if it will bother you. Luckily for me, I work about a foot and a half, two feet away, and you can't really tell the difference between the two. Whew. Okay, another negative is the startup of the monitor once attached to my Mac Studio isn't as immediate as when you start up the Mac. Obviously, when you hit the space bar on the Mac, it's native, it just turns on. Uh, with this guy, it takes a little while to wake up, so much so that I'm actually typing my password to get in while the screen is still black. And then when it finally wakes up, I'm, I'm in. Like I'm just typing my, 
my password in the dark. Uh, so just get, just know you'll get, have to get used to that. Just as an aside, if you want a cool little desk lamp, BenQ also makes this monitor desk lamp that you can uh, just you know dim and change the color of, and it's nice if you're gonna write at your desk. I did a review of this little BenQ little strip and I'll put up that link below as well. All right, super happy with my monitor purchase. I hope that helps someone out there and I'll see you guys next time.